back to nature at home with Bianca. Um, as you can see here, setting looks a little different than you might be used to. Main difference being, it's dark outside. And that's what's uh, different about today's video, because today I'm going to be talking um, with you a little bit about the stars in the night sky. Um, so I do know that's one of the things um, that I feel like I miss from not being on site at camp a lot, um, is being able to enjoy the stars at night. But I want to make sure um, you all know that you don't have to be somewhere like Briarwood in order to see the stars and appreciate um, the night sky. You can do it from really anywhere. Um, there's just a couple of tips and tricks I'm going to give you um, to make it more fun, more enjoyable, and to help you learn a little bit more too. Um, so I am here on my back porch right now. Um, I do have this back light on just so you can see me while I'm filming. Um, but I am going to turn that off in a second. And actually in my yard over there, I have a telescope. Um, now it's not super fancy telescope. Um, it's made designed for kids. I got that 15 years ago or something, so it's pretty old. Um, but it works. And um, I'm going to be using it to look at some stars closer up. Um, I'm not sure how much I'll even get to show you when it comes to the stars just because they're small and they don't really come out that well on camera. Uh, but at the very least, I want to um, at least tell you a little bit about the stars I'm seeing. Um, give you a couple tips and tricks on how you can um, see the star as well. And also show you an app I use on my phone that helps me identify stars. Um, so that's my goal for tonight. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to use the telescope to help me, hopefully give you some tips and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. So let's go. Alright, so um, I'm here at my telescope, sitting in the middle of my yard, trying to look at these stars. Hopefully you can see me okay. I know it is very dark outside, but that's actually one of the first tips I want to give you when it comes to stargazing. Um, so first tips and probably one of the best tips of stargazing is to make sure that there's as little light as possible around you. Um, so I'm in the middle of my yard right now. Um, all the lights are off in the backyard. Um, the blinds are closed, so the lights that are on inside, not much is getting outside. The only light I have on is I do have a flashlight lighting me right now. Um, the only reason I have that is so that you can see me when I'm filming, and it's not just you staring at a dark screen for a long time. So, um, obviously if I wasn't filming, I would turn that off because um, the darker it is, the better. Um, mostly because your eyes need to adjust to the darkness. So, the more your eyes adjust to the darkness, um, the more stars you'll be able to see in the sky. Um, which is why when you're in the city um, or when you're in busy places with a lot of lights, you tend to not see as many stars um, versus if you ever have been on like a camping trip. Um, if you're at Briarwood, for example, um, we are kind of in the city-ish, but it's um, kind of away from lights, so a lot of times you can see a decent number of stars. Um, or if you go camping somewhere really remote where there's like no lights anywhere, um, that's always when you can see the most stars. Um, so that's definitely my first tip when it comes to stargazing, is reduce your light as much as possible. Um, I even in the middle of my yard instead of up towards the house more because I know the house has light and I want to get away from that. My second tip is to check the weather and make sure it's not cloudy. So actually, in the time that it took me to film that intro that you just saw on my porch, uh, and to get over here and to set up over here, um, a large amount of clouds came over the sky and right now they're blowing away. I still see a little bit over here above my house, but for the most part they're gone. And so um, I knew tonight was a fairly clear night. Uh, luckily I got lucky that the clouds didn't stay. I'm still keeping an eye out to make sure they don't come back. Um, but if there's too many clouds, um, not only does obviously the clouds block the sky and you can't see the stars, but um, clouds actually reflect light, so any light that is coming up from the earth is being reflected back down by the clouds, and they make it less dark, so it's, again, harder to see stars. Um, so yeah, so those are my first two tips um, for stargazing. Another tip I want to mention, too, when it comes to stargazing is make sure that it's dark enough, not just with the lights around you, but with the time of day. So actually, right now, I'm going to be completely honest with you, it is 10.30 p.m., um, it's just because it's summer, and in the summer the days are longer, meaning the sun sets later, meaning it takes longer to get 
um, really dark outside. So if this is past your bedtime, um, don't fret. That doesn't mean you can't see the stars ever. However, I would either maybe ask the adult at home if um, you could have one night where you stay up a little late, or if that's too much, just wait till fall. Wait till daylight savings times ends, and then the sun will set early in the day, and it'll start getting darker um, closer to like 8.30, 9 o'clock times when you're still um, allowed to be awake. Um, so right now, yes, it is very late, but uh, wait till, especially winter. Winter, it gets dark very early, and assuming the weather is okay, you should be able to see a good amount of stars in the winter. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the stars themselves. Um, so I have here my telescope. It helps me um, see the stars up close because there are certain characteristics uh, we can sometimes see in the stars even from this far away. Um, but one of the most helpful things I think for stargazing, um, this is kind of new, is um, actually an app that I have. Um, so I'm gonna show you, and I will screen record on my phone too so that you can see. Um, but I have this app called Skyview. Um, specifically Skyview Light. I have the free version. I think the free version does all that I need to do. Um, but it shows me, it helps me identify the stars. So um, if I hold up my phone, um, let's say I see a really bright star right here in front of me, but I don't know what it's called. Um, if I hold up my phone to where I see this star to be, the star shows up on my phone. And not only does it show up, but it gives me the name of that star. So it's telling me right now that star's name is Arcturus. Um, and so it does that with all the stars. Um, I think it's a super awesome app. Um, it shows me where the stars are. It can show me where the planets are too. Um, I know over here, I see a very bright thing. And uh, it shows me on my phone that that's Saturn. Um, and so Saturn and Jupiter, excuse me, Jupiter is the one I saw. Um, Saturn's right next to it. Um, but it can show you the constellations, it can identify stars for you, it can even show you the uh, International Space Station or the Hubble Telescope. So um, you're watching this a week from now, but um, right now I'm filming about two or three days ago. Um, you may have seen on the news that the International Space Station was gonna be visible um, because it, um, Based on its orbit around Earth, it was visible in the sky a few days ago, and um, I could see on my phone where it was. So if I was having trouble seeing it with just my eyes, um, I could use the phone to help me find where it would be, and then I was like, oh, there it is, and then I could watch it the rest of the way. So I definitely recommend this app or similar apps. There are plenty of apps like it, um, but I definitely think this is a huge plus when it comes to um, IDing stars and learning more about stars. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and show you that app I was talking about. It's called Skyview. Um, I have the free version, um, which is totally fine. Um, but this is what it looks like. So basically, this app actually has an augmented reality feature. Um, so um, not only does it show the stars, but it also shows real life. So like you can see my watch right there. Um, there is a option to turn this off if you don't like the augmented reality. Um, it just shows an image of the stars. Um, but I think the augmented reality is really helpful. That's why I like this app so much, just because I can see things in relation to where I am. So even though it's really dark, I can see that's the back window to my house and it helps me see where I am in relation to things around me. Um, but anyways, this is the app. Basically, um, like I showed you before, what you do is you find a star that you're interested in. Um, you hold up your phone to it and then it'll tell you which star it is. So this is a star I pointed out before, Arcturus. Um, it tells you if it's in a constellation or not. This one is in um, Butes. I don't know how to say that. Um, so that's super cool. Um, it also, as you can see here, shows you the constellations. Um, so this is Virgo that happens to be right in front of me. Um, we also have down here is Leo. Um, and then down here is Cancer. Um, it does show you um, the International Space Station, like I think I mentioned before. Um, and it shows me, this is the uh, Hubble Space Telescope. So this red line here is also the horizon. So I can see what's above the horizon versus what's below the horizon. Um, so let's just look at a few things. I showed you Arcturus already. That's a pretty bright star I can see right now. Um, over here, I actually have Ursa Major, which is the Big Dipper. Um, so this part right here 
is the Big Dipper that many of you are probably familiar with, um, but Ursa Major is the full constellation. Um, I'm going to point out a few more bright stars for you. Um, specifically, I see a really bright one up here. That is Vega. Um, if the moon was out, I could see the moon as well, but I have a new moon right now today, so I can't see it. And actually, we have planets, so I can see right here, this is where Jupiter is, and Saturn is actually right next to it. And the thing that's super cool is that it actually shows you their projection, so where they're going to be in a few hours. So if I, you see this gray line pops up. So if I click Jupiter, this gray line pops up, and if I start following it, it'll tell me where Jupiter will be at a certain point. So when it becomes a 1 a.m., Jupiter be will be way over here, even though it's currently over here. Um, and I can do that with some of these stars too. So I have um, Arcturus here. If I click it, it says it's 1037, which is the time right now. But if I follow these dotted lines, that's where it's expected to be. So by midnight, it'll be over here. Um, and by 2 a.m., it'll actually be below the horizon. Um, same thing with the International Space Station. I can track that. So this one is heading up this way. Um, and yeah, I think this app is super cool. You can also um, search things and it'll help you find them. So if I go here to search and I'm looking for the moon because I don't see the moon tonight. Um, I can click it and this arrow will point to me until I find the moon. And the moon is actually right here. So it's first of all, it's below our red line meaning it's below the horizon, and it's actually in the new moon phase, so that's why I cannot see it tonight. Um, it's because it's in the new moon phase. So, um, I really like this app. There are a few other features you can play with, like there's a there's a night mode, which might be easier for you to see um, at night. Um, I personally really love that it shows what the constellations um, actually look like and what they're supposed to look like, because sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, and yeah, I definitely recommend an app like this to help you um, identify stars around you. All right, so as you can see, my setup's a little different right now. Um, I got a good shot at Jupiter, but when I look at Jupiter here, see what I've got. I can see it. I can't see it that much better than um, what I can see with the naked eye. I can definitely tell it's not a star, it's a planet. Um, though I can see a few of Jupiter's moons hanging out around it. They're just like these tiny dots on either side of Jupiter. Um, but I can see these moons surrounding Jupiter, but they're just like tiny, tiny, tiny little specks I can see in a telescope. Um, I'm also gonna try to find Saturn because Saturn is right next to Jupiter here. Um, let's take a look. Is it? Saturn is much less bright than Jupiter though, so it'll be a little bit harder for me to find. Okay, so I did finally find Saturn in the telescope. I will admit Saturn's a pretty cool one if you ever get the opportunity to see it in a telescope. Just because um, when I look in the telescope here, I can see that it's oval shaped. And if I focus on it enough and look at it, enough I can actually tell that there's rings around it um and so if you don't remember Saturn is one of the ones that has pretty distinguishable rings around it um caused by debris that got caught into um the gravity's pull of the planet um and so it has these very distinguishable rings and you can tell that it's Saturn so Planets are definitely, definitely, definitely super cool to look at through a telescope. If you ever get the opportunity to go someplace that has a telescope, or if you have one, or if your friend has one, that's an awesome thing um, to do. All right, so um, now I think I'm just gonna look around um, at some of the stars that I see. Um, use my app to tell you um, a little bit that I know about stars. Um, I mentioned Arcturus before, which is right over here. Um, it is pretty bright. Um, I'm probably only going to be pointing out the bright ones in the sky just because those are easier for me to see. Um, Arcturus, I learned, is a, um, a red giant, I believe, um, star. So stars go through different phases of life, um, and the red giant is um, one of the last stages of life of a star, depending on what kind of star it is, before it explodes and turns into like a supernova, 
or nebula or something like that. So, um, a star's color will actually tell us how hot it is and what stage of life it typically is in. The hottest stars are actually blue. You would think they would be red because you think of red being hot. Um, but if you've ever seen like natural gas burning or like a Bunsen burner um, and you see blue flames, those are always the hottest flames. And so we know that blue stars are the hottest stars. Um, and those are actually the youngest stars as well. Um, white and yellow stars like our sun about in the middle or so of its life cycle um, and they're like the medium level stars um, so they're not super hot and they're not super cold um, and the red giants and the red super giants um, red stars are the oldest they're getting close to dying and um, and they are the coolest stars so the stars are gradually getting colder through their life cycle so Arcturus I looked it up is a red giant which means it is nearing the end of its life and it's cooler um, another star that I saw Vega um, so Vega is way up here which for me right now is I'm sort of facing east this way and it's straight up um, Vega is actually um, more of like a white yellow star it's which is called a main sequence star um, but I believe it's that white yellow color and it's actually very similar to the Sun when I researched about it a little bit I saw that it actually um, the most important stars in the sky to study besides our own Sun because it is so similar um, and so I thought that was super cool to learn about and the thing that's cool about stars is I can even sort of see the color in some cases. I can see that Arcturus is slightly more red. Um, there was another red star. Oh, there's specifically a star over here. I can tell it's like a really bright red-orange. Uh, I'm going to see which it is. It is probably Antares, um, which is actually in Scorpius, the constellation Scorpius, if you're familiar with that one. Okay, so Antares is a red super giant, meaning that it's super big and it's super red. So I can distinctly see, if I look closely, that it does have a red tint to it when I look at it. Um, and it is a part of Scorpius, and I actually read that it's said they call it the heart of Scorpius because it's red, so that's super cool. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, this is actually our last episode, so thanks for hanging out with me all summer. Um, I hope you really liked my Nature at Home series. Um, and yeah, let me know if you see any cool stars you want to share with me. Um, tell me on Flipgrid. Let me know. Um, thank you guys so much. I had so much fun with you guys this summer. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the year. Um, all right, I will see you later. Bye. Partially, that is because it is July 21st today. No, sorry. Um, so it's actually... It's pretty dark right now, but it's also 10.30 p.m. right now. So I'm staying up a little late tonight to do this. Uh right there, that's, I'm pretty sure that's the chimney to my house. Um, and so if I see that there's a star directly above it, um, I can use the relation of my real life. Actually, that's the window of my house. As long as it's safe and you're with an adult, if you go to like a park or something. Um, no, I don't wanna encourage you guys to go to parks at night. Go with an adult if you're gonna go to park with them. Thanks so much for um, hanging out with me tonight. Um, I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock.